Well, hello, hello again. Welcome to part four of my Como Rebbe playthrough. So for this time, I'm gonna play through again, and I'm gonna go for the, um, I'm gonna go for the combative option. Whenever, whenever a dialogue choice comes up and I have the option to be com combative, um, uh, I'm gonna go for it. So as this is the second time I am playing through, you guys have already probably seen parts one through three. You've already seen most of the game already. Um, for this part four, I'm mainly going to be focusing on doing highlights. Um, um, this is because this is for our entertainment now. We are we are really we just want to mess with the characters. <laughs> so let's let's dive in. I feel a tap on my shoulder, and I let out a loud yawn, giving my friend a slight smile. It isn't long before I receive one in return. At least we were both on the same page. There'd be plenty of time to sleep later on. Hey, you all right over there? Ever since we left the airport, you've been dozing off like mad. I thought it was pretty good company, you know? You're offending me. I shake my head, as if doing so would grant me further clarity. What makes you think you can wake me up like that? Yeah, I'm gonna be a grumpy ass. There's no way you're serious right now. Oh, I'm serious, Isaac. I am serious. If you fall asleep, you'll ruin your sleep schedule. Things would be pretty boring if we're all out of sync. Oh, this is gonna be good. Like, Isaac really cares about making sure that, like, this first meeting is good and this first week is good. And here I am. I'm gonna just go contrary to all his plans. Besides, before he can continue, he's cut off by a loud beeping noise. A light on the dashboard starts to flash, causing him to groan in annoyance. The people we end up hating are usually the ones we love the most. Or maybe they're just the people we end up hating. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. I grabbed my bags from the trunk. An easy task, as I made sure to pack light. The point of this journey was to leave my baggage behind, not carry it with me. Isaac steps in to help out, and I turn to face the house. My new home. Well, what do you think? The pictures don't do it justice, do they? It has its quirks, but it served all of us just fine. Ooh, let's go for this neutral option. It's great. Thanks. Thanks for having me. No problem. You're more than welcome in my home. Hmm. I hope you'll get along well with Dante, though. He's, uh... <clears throat> Bit of a handful. At least I'll know it wasn't my fault if you ever jumped ship. <laughs> I, I, wait, I don't remember if that line was, was in the first playthrough. But... <laughs> yeah, what's with that face? Is he... Is he, dis, like, disgruntled by my response? I don't know. He smiles at me before closing the trunk and locking everything up. I can see Dante sitting on the couch, engulfed in his phone. Isaac seems a little mad and confronts him immediately. Hey, Dante, did you mess with those changes I made the other day? I thought I told you to play along with those. I do it for a reason. <laughs> I don't know, he doesn't look that mad to me. He looks, he looks pretty happy about, you know, confronting Dante about um, uh, messing with his stuff. Dante's ears perk up, and he immediately rises from the couch. 
I can tell he let his guard down, but he was eagerly awaiting our entrance. Whatever kind of first impression he was planning, his lack of awareness destroyed it. Man, can't you see that I'm looking out for you? If they found out about your tinkering, they'd dock you points. Or worse, I'm sure Delta has my back here. Messing with Argus just isn't worth it. Putting me on the spot the second after you meet me? Nice. I scratch my head and Isaac looks at me, like, likely expecting my support. I'm gonna go with Dante this time, because last time, um, um, last time I, I succeeded in getting close to Isaac, but not Dante, I'm gonna, I'm gonna side with Dante this time. I agree with Dante. Ideals aside, legal trouble is never worth it. Knew I could count on you, especially after everything Isaac said. He may call me stubborn, but he respects you way more. I think you might be the one to finally knock some sense into him. <laughs> <sighs> Let's just change the topic, all right? I know I brought it up, but I don't want our first meeting to be an argument. Besides, I work for Argus. I know what I'm doing when I make changes. He stands behind the register, lost in thought. But I could tell he was tired. That's why I have his boxed lunch in my hands. He forgot it at home, and I wasn't busy. It was a pretty harmless delivery, all things considered. I'm sure it'd make him happy. Upon seeing me, his ears immediately perk up, and the appearance of stress melts away. Delta! Oh, what a lifesaver you are! Ugh, the only thing worse than working is working on an empty stomach. I promise it won't happen again. I'm not normally forgetful like this. Oh man, don't take me for granted, Isaac. Just make sure it doesn't happen again. Yikes. Fair. It was my mistake, and I should pay for it. You seem a bit tense, though. But don't worry, I'm gonna help with that. The plans I have for the weekend are coming together, and it'll be tons of fun. Oh yeah? Well, it better be. He gives me a soft smile and turns back toward his computer. As he faces his work once more, the smirk turns into a grimace. Oh, like, like a focused kind of grimace. Oh. It was almost like his worries melted away as we spoke. Before anyone else can talk, Taylor steps in. Hey, is that a compliment or an insult? Yes. <laughs> With a scoff, he sits down beside me and holds out a fist. I bump mine against his, and then he lets out an exaggerated yawn. Resting one arm on the back of the booth, it felt like he was about to pull me in. Ah, nice to meet you, Delta. Even prettier in person. Can you please move your arm? Well, I'd buy you dinner first, but looks like you beat me to it. What does he mean by that? Didn't mean anything by it, though. Just a friendly welcome. If I was putting the moves on you, it'd be way more obvious. But looks like you beat me to it. I was gonna buy you dinner, but looks like you beat me to it. Oh, 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 because I already b bought my dinner, I guess? I guess that's what he means, which, which, by which he means to say he was going to be generous slash flirtatious, it's unclear which, by treating me to dinner. But I beat him to it, didn't mean anything by it, he didn't mean anything by it though, just a friendly welcome. If he was putting the moves on me, it'd be way more obvious. <sighs> Still your goal to flirt with all my friends, I see. I'm getting pretty good at it, too. <laughs> what? He moves his arm from where it was, and then points at the table. A pair of headphones rest in front of Dante. They get Taylor's attention. This one is actually a bit atypical, but I'll ask it anyway. As we've already established, 
you're a bit of a unique case. So, if you had the option to experience a vision, would you? Is this really such an atypical question? I know you say you're fine without one, but this is a different angle. If I could offer you a vision of your future, would you take it? Keep in mind that you might not like what you see. Not at all. Now I think last time I think last time I chose this one, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go with this choice. I'm fine without Komarebi. All right, I'll take your word for it. You're a really interesting person, you know. I like that. Most people like you crave Komarebi to be like everybody else. I've never found any merit in that, though. Trying to be like other people only makes you forget who you are. There's a certain beauty in embracing what makes you special. But now, it's impossible to justify our skepticism. In fact, it now seems unreasonable to deny. Who's to say that Komarebi wasn't gifted to special people in the past? These people throughout the ages could have just been the first to receive it. I'm gonna pick this one. Let's, let's go for the conspiracy theory here. Yeah, maybe like a trial run before giving it to the world. Interesting take, but you could be right. We do trial runs all the time. No reason why nature can't do the same. It's just that the implications of these visions unsettled a lot of people. Oh no, no, I'm not talking about nature doing a trial run here. I think you know what I mean. I'd advise you not to think of Komarebi as a gift, though. A lot of people without visions do that. They feel like they weren't worthy. Hmm. That's a downward spiral, though, as I doubt we'll ever be able to prove its origins. Oh, I don't know about that. But regardless of where it came from, we have to live with it. You seem to be doing pretty good in a world like this, though. You may not fit in, but like I said, you don't need to. He inches a bit closer to me, and he seems much more calm. I guess now that it's out in the open, his anxiety is disappearing. It's never easy to bring up the kind of thing he just brought up. I'm curious if the gesture was supposed to mean anything. Either way, I'm fine. I just couldn't stop myself from wondering. But if we do go out, expect me to be incredibly awkward. Oh, if we do go out, I haven't said anything yet, Isaac. This does seem a bit sudden, but it's also natural. There's always been some chemistry between us, and now we live together. It crossed my mind a few times, but it's clearly racing through his. No matter what, though. Friends until the end. Oh. Both of these choices are boring. Let's give it some time. It's too soon to tell. But that's in a thumbs up kind of way. <laughs> you got it, Delta. He gives me a playful nudge on the shoulder. Now Dante can stop teasing me about this. You should see our DMs. He kept bugging me to ask. That's fun to know. That certainly is fun to know, and I wouldn't have found that out if I had never chosen that option. But I'm glad I did, you know? There was just so much stuff up in the air. Yeah, I applaud you, Isaac, for having the courage to address that. And hey, my response was um, optimistic. So, you really didn't lose anything, did you? It turned out well in the end. And nobody likes uncertainty. I mean, we're all creatures of routine these days. <sighs> Argus has made sure of that one. But sometimes a routine is more like a prison. So, let's embrace our freedom. Let's drink beer at 2 p.m. <sighs> he smirks and stands up from the couch. I say, why not, and accept his offer to share a beer. 
The air is clear, and it seems like we can carry on like normal. All right, but let's not do this every day. I think that's all you'll get out of me right now, though. Maybe we should grab a drink sometime, chat a bit more? I mean, if you're down for that. I'd suggest the club, but that night is going to be a drunken blur. If we're talking about next week, however, my schedule is wide open. Again, both of these choices are positive, which, I mean, is, is good. I like that turning... I, I like that the non-romantic option is also positive. Um... But at the same time, the first time we meet Taylor, um, he puts his arm <laughs> around, uh, he puts his arm ov over me in the booth at the cafe. And, um, and, and the options presented, there's a romance option, there's a, there's a withdrawing option, the, the, the irritable option, get your, please take your arm away from me. Um, but o over here, we're just presented with two positive options. So it doesn't give me as much freedom as I would have liked, but okay, we're gonna go for the non-romantic option here. Just to um, just to explore his character more, because in choosing the non-romantic option for Isaac gave us some more insight, I think, into his and Dante's conversations. You know what, now I'm starting to wonder I really, I really can't remember if, if he revealed that Dante had been bugging him about the possibility of romance with me or not. That in, in, the, in my previous playthrough when I selected the romantic option, I can't remember how much Isaac revealed to me uh, in response to that. But yeah, let's, let's explore this side. Sounds great. I'd enjoy getting to know you more. Such flattery, but I'm really not that interesting. Any illusion of me being cool will disappear real quick. But as your roommate, I'm obligated to bond with you, or whatever. You may be close to Isaac, but you're a stranger to me. Very if fair. there's one thing I hate, it's strangers in my home. <laughs> Lucky for you, though, I'm down to turn you into something more. Oh, good. I feel like that was even more positive than when I selected the romance option here. Because the romance option, he was like, oh, okay, okay, no, 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 we're not going to go that fast. Um, but again, I don't have a good memory. And again, I can't remember if these lines, uh, if, if he said the same thing in response to the romance option. Um, I will have to go back and rewatch my own footage to figure that out. He sits upright and tilts his head to the side. I can tell that it's a sign. He wants me out of his chair. With dramatic flair, he acts like he's passing out. Then a moment later, his head rests on my shoulder. I laugh and exchange awkward glances with everyone else. Or maybe you could get it for me, Delta. <laughs> uh, I fear I've gotten a bit lightheaded over here. I have no problem doing a favor for a friend, so I agree. But a temptation rises within me to mess with him before I get up. Looking down at him, I think of what message I'd like to send. I will shove him off my shoulder. With a laugh, I shove him off my shoulder. He lets out an exaggerated gasp like I hurt his feelings. <gasps> wow, rejected! I feel like that could go... The shove off the shoulder could go multiple ways, because it, it could be very playful, and it doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be a negative option. <clears throat> um, but we chose it anyway. Shocking absolutely no one. <laughs> <laughs> a few chuckles fill the room as I stand up and walk to the fridge. The cola is easy to find, even amongst the booze-filled appliance. When I make it back to the table, I notice that Dante is holding the rum. Uh, I think that's the way it goes, so I'm going to go through the journal entries now. 
View which journal entry. Right now we've got five journal entries to go through. And at least four of these I haven't read yet. I'm not sure if I've even read the first one. Sunday, December 15th, 2041. December 15th. Right, so it starts on December 15th. We know, right, of course, we know it's coming up to New Year's um, in the game. Uh, so, of course, December 15th makes a lot of sense. And if I'm not mistaken, oh, December 15th is three days from now when I'm actually recording this. I finally moved in with Isaac. Wow, that feels weird to say. I have been dreaming of a new start for such a long time. Now that it's here, it feels kind of surreal, like a dream. Dreams are good though, especially when the alternative is a nightmare. But I don't think I'll have to worry about that. <laughs> Delta is... Delta writes with flair in their journal. That's something that I don't think I could ever do. Yeah. I look back on my writing and I cringe, which is not, well, maybe not the best attitude to have towards my past writing. Um, but it's just so hard to, I guess, capture a mindset on paper for me. And then to reread that and, and recall that same mindset. I may worry about Dante though. He seems to disregard a lot of Isaac's wishes and their personalities clash all the time. But they seem to use that as a springboard to become closer, instead of an excuse to drift apart. I feel like we could all learn a thing or two from that. Isaac added me to the group chat, and I got to talk with Taylor for the first time. We're going to try organizing an outing in a few days so I can meet with him for real. He's a pretty popular streamer, actually. I could even tell from the energy he exuded over text that there was something special about him. I wouldn't throw the term born entertainer around easily, but he's definitely a born entertainer. I could tell he's a bit cautious about his public image though. He kept telling Isaac and Dante not to fight, since he didn't want any scandals on his shoulders. That's a ticking time bomb though. I've only been here for one day and I can already tell that getting Dante and Isaac to stop teasing each other is a fool's errand. When I write about these people, though, I feel happy. I definitely made the right choice. Smelly, smiley face. Oh my gosh, smiley face. Delta. I'm going to write on the sides, like a true rebel. fascinating. I don't... I don't remember if I read this on my first playthrough, but Delta is choosing to be a true rebel. Hmm. And I wonder if that's because of the choices I'm making or not. I mean, he's right. He's right. Isaac and Dante are prone to clash. And they're probably going to have a really big clash, and it's the big events in our lives that either make or break the things that are dear to us, uh, including our relationships, um, ourselves, and our, our hopes for the future. Um, the bigger it is, the bigger it's, uh, the, the bigger the consequences can be the bigger the potential for making or breaking things. View which let's, journal entry? Let's go, number two. Monday, December, uh, December 16th, 2041. Isaac left his lunch at home today, so I had to bring it to him at work. His store is definitely pretty chill, and he even told me that his manager is always hiring. So if it ever came to it, I could work with him. Only if I need to, though. A last resort. I wonder... Oh, oh, here we go. 
I'm gonna zip my lips. Working with friends can easily destroy productivity. There's also the fact that we'd be competing for sales. That's never a good thing to do with people who are close to you. Not that there'd even be a competition. I mean, I'd clearly win. I do feel bad for Isaac though. He mentioned that he lost commission on a lot of sales. I guess people who were up to no good decided to con him into selling them some stuff. He told me that he can lose points since he's basically enabling their crimes. Since when is ignorance a form of complicity? Isaac is 100% innocent, and I'd always have his back. I wonder what crimes they were committing, and why they'd need to buy so much stuff though. Maybe I'll ask Isaac sometime. If they dock points from his score, they better give him every last detail, or at least let him contest it. But I guess if Argus didn't want to tell him, they could hide behind the new glitch in the system excuse. A blanket statement that seems to absolve Argus of any wrongdoing activity lately. It's pretty weak. Anyway, my mind is just running wild. I wasn't even planning to write in this journal today, but it's currently late at night, and Dante is blasting music while he works. I'm pretty sure that I can hear Isaac fuming all the way from my room. Delta. Bigger smiley face. And side note, we're all just numbers in a computer. Yeah, so as I was reading this first paragraph, I was wondering if these sentences were, in, were motivated by the irritation that I showed, that I expressed, um, from having to bring Isaac his lunch. Um, but I would guess that it wasn't, because because this second paragraph clearly fleshes out that Delta has very good reasons for not wanting to work in the same place as Isaac. All right. View which journal entry? Tuesday, December 17th, 2041. <laughs> And fascinating, from the last journal entry, Delta said, My mind is, is reeling. I wasn't planning on writing in this journal today. Is Delta's mind racing because they decided to write in the journal? And here are all those thoughts coming out? Or did they decide to write in the journal because their mind was reeling? They decided to write in the journal in order to organize these thoughts and get them out. Um... The fact that we're writing in our journal every day could be an indicator that a lot is happening and we have a lot to process and get down on paper. So, Tuesday, December 17th, 2041. Eight days before Christmas in the world of Komorebi, if Christmas exists. Um, I think it was Taylor who brought up New Year's Eve. So it's possible that Christmas doesn't exist in the world of Komorebi, and New Year's Eve is the next big occasion for having a party. I met Taylor today. It was definitely an experience. He even tried flirting with me like five seconds after meeting me. But I guess that's just how he is. Can't hate on a guy for being himself. Harmless fun. It really, it really was, since he respected my wishes after our, I made them known to him. It was also my first time going to the Triple R. That's the coffee shop our gang frequents. Yes, we get more world building about this coffee shop. It also doubles as a nice place to get a meal. Their hangover breakfast has been immensely recommended any time the name of the shop is brought up. The Triple R. Rest, relaxation, and whatever the third one is. I guess it's one of those mysteries we'll never solve. Or I guess I could ask the employees. But that requires socializing. Anyway, I didn't even get to learn much about Taylor. The topic of the day was our upcoming nightclub trip. 
Isaac seems to have planned a party surrounding my arrival. And not only that, but there's another new friend of his coming to town. Delta does not like socializing. I mean, we already know that they're a very uh, introverted and introspective person because they don't talk a lot um, in the group chat or in the conversations. I guess I wasn't the only one. Ooh, yeah, there it is, there it is. I was waiting for that. Um, it's like, yeah, I'm not the only online friend that Isaac is, is trying to trying to meet up with IRL. Um, you know, Delta shouldn't be getting jealous. After all, I'm the one that Isaac allowed to move in with them. Um, but, you know, emotions aren't always rational. They can't always be quelled by rational thinking. And, um, and yeah, it's, I feel like it's totally all right that Delta is possibly feeling a little bit of jealousy. I guess I wasn't the only one. Not that it matters. I can't expect everyone else's lives to revolve around my arrival. But it wouldn't hurt if it did. At least for the first little bit. Everyone likes feeling like a star every once in a while. Dante left his wallet. I think I'll bring it back to him. He did mention wanting to bond when I got the chance. And his room is pretty close to mine. I wonder if he even realized his mistake. I'll figure that out right now. Delta. With the nya emoji. <laughs> um... Is there any meaning to the to, to what's going on here? The, the top shapes look like raindrops, and the bottom shapes are X's. Um, possibly because Delta was taking their time in writing out these two sent these uh, two lines, wondering about the triple R: rest, relaxation. Recovery! Recovery from hangovers. <laughs> That's my bet. Rest, relaxation, and recovery. Rest, relaxation... It could be recreation. Although... You know... And, and, and it definitely is a great place to go out with friends, um, but obviously they're not going to top the charts in recreation. That's for, that's for clubs and um, music venues and restaurant, bigger, bigger restaurants to be, to be taking pride in. The triple R, the triple R. I wonder. View which journal entry? Number four, Wednesday, December 18th, 2041. Okay, so I've been forgetting a few things. That discount Isaac applied to my identity wasn't really what I thought. He just shared his friends and family discount with me since he works for Argus. I feel a lot better about that now. I, I kind of thought we were cheating the system. I don't want to get in trouble so soon after moving. I really like it here. You know what I feel better about is that it's not coming out of out of Isaac's paycheck. I mean, in a way, it could be cheating the system. Because when I hear the phrase coming out of my paycheck, um, to, me, to me, it reminds me that there are a number of things that I can pay for. Um, through my employer that comes out of my paycheck and it's before taxes. So in a, in a sense, there's a tiny bit being, being saved there uh, before taxes. Yeah, yeah, that's the way it works, right? Math? It's, it's a weird kind of math that, that is difficult for me to wrap my head around. Um, um, cheating the system, cheating the system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, Delta was concerned about that this was actually a form of theft. <laughs> which, which it isn't. It's a friends and family discount. And if it's a friends and family discount, of course it's not cheating the system, because we're friends too. Um, yeah, there's no shady business there. I also started to bond with Dante. He also, he always, sorry, he always seemed a bit distant, but I kind of felt a real connection the moment we were alone. I wouldn't say distant, just that his character is, tends to be a more, uh, a bit more deflective or, or, um, I mean, he's direct with his communication. <laughs> um, possibly, well, possibly he takes things slower in connecting with people, I guess. You know, without the constant quips he likes to throw around. They were still there, don't get me wrong. But they didn't take the forefront, like they normally do. I got to learn more about him and his work, and it was great. I'm sure Isaac will be happy that we're getting along too. Me, Isaac, and Taylor also ran into a zero on the street today. I knew that they, they were here to protest, Illegally, yet also peacefully, but I didn't pay them any mind. That also changed today. These people are no longer a concept in my head. I've met them for real, and a lot of the advice people have been giving me just feels wrong now. Ignore them, don't get involved, but they're people and they're suffering. How can we ignore that? Maybe that's why Argus never wanted them in the city. So we always saw them as an invisible threat. I guess it's a lot easier to fight the idea of a person than, is, than it is the actual person. Oh, the, the idea of a person than it is to fight the actual person. I hope they get what they want. And here, here, I understand from the context that it's talking about, I hope I hope the Zeros get what they want. Frowny face. And again, more squiggles to indicate that Delta was taking their time pondering these things. And also giving us some insight into Delta's character or the way their mind works. They make these very orderly squiggles. Here are the pyramid. Prior, it was the X's down there and the little diamonds up there. Uh, ran out of space on the bottom, so I'm signing here and no one can stop me. Delta. I find it kind of amusing that Delta's taking on... Uh, <laughs> A rebel personality, despite how silent they are, it it reminds me of. Excuse me. It reminds me of um, Chris from Delta Rune. And I'm recording this. I'm recording this after Delta Rune um, uh, Chapter Two has come out. So I mean, we know that Chris from Deltarune is mentally disturbed, and whew, there's a lot to unpack there. Delta, on the other hand, is very well adjusted, um, but they like being a rebel. They, 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 they like, um, they like poking fun. But in private, obviously. Oh, well, well, I've been making some choices to poke fun with my friends. Um, that's the kind of person Delta is. Just like Chris, and, and the way Chris <laughs> likes to, uh, uh, um, likes to prank Noel. View Wait, which journal entry? In a friendly way. All right, and the last journal entry, number five. Ooh, those are some heavy, 
noticing that they are in the shape of of the the Argus Corporation's insignia, which someone in the Como Rebi Discord pointed out that this is a lambda. Um, that was news to me, but lambda and delta both being letters of uh, the Greek alphabet. Delta, as as I mentioned earlier, delta standing for um, change or the differential, the incremental change in something mathematically. Um, and I think the person, the person who pointed out the lambda in the in the in the Discord, was also saying that lambda is a symbol of of uh, Spartan. Um, what's the word? Spartanness, I guess. E efficiency, um, um, efficiency over humaneness. Yeah, those are those are some very heavy, heavily. Delta was really pressing down on the pen for these. Is is the first impression that I get. Maybe maybe I'm just reading too much into this. Thursday, December nineteenth, twenty forty one. Well, tomorrow is the big day. We've got all the stuff we need to pregame, and everything is set in stone. I've been told to take it easy and relax. I wanted to help with preparation, but this party is for me, as they say, so I should just sit back. I guess I should accept the courtesy while I can. A lot of the offers I've been given lately were just because I'm new here. I knew, I know, I know that once I settle in, I'll be expected to pull my weight a little bit more. Or maybe a lot more. Who knows? But I have the feeling that this expectation will become a reality once the dust from our nightclub outing settles. So I guess I'll enjoy this last little bit of laziness while I still can. The visits with my counselor are going well too. Honestly, everything is going well for me lately. It's so much better than where I came from. I finally feel like I can breathe and live for myself. I think I'm through living for other people. I was so used to helping others that I forgot what it felt like to help myself. A little self-care can go an extremely long way. My counselor did mention the zeros, though. I kind of have a personal policy where I refuse to lie to my counselor, but I don't know what to do. <laughs> That's a good policy. <laughs> That's a very good policy to, um, to, to, to make the most of, of counseling. <laughs> he technically works for Argus, so I'm not sure how he'd react if he knew that I not only socialized with Zero, but gave them some of my food as well. Ah, oh, such a crummy system! I hate it! I mean, it seems inherently harmless, but I'm pretty sure it's still against the law. I know counselors say that you can tell them anything, and it's just between you and them. But is that true? Is that true? Oh, I hate this so much. I hate it. I hate the way they treat zeros in this society. And the system, the way the system forces us to treat zeros that way. Not forces, not forces. You can always cheat the system. You can always make stuff fly under the radar. It's fascinating. I haven't seen anyone talk about cameras. I'm not sure if there is a camera explicitly mentioned in um, in Isaac's security system when we when we uh, walked through the door and 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 Isaac was greeted by the digital assistant. Um, like how would how would Argus know that we were helping? But but I mean. If zeros aren't tracked, aren't they basically invisible to the system? But yeah, if there are cam if there are cameras, and there probably are, I'm wondering. I'm wondering if cameras have been superseded by some, uh, I, I guess, less costly or less analog form of tracking. Because cameras require lenses, and they can be obscured. Um, and of course, 
facial recognition can be can be evaded um, uh, with masks. Uh, but but yeah, I, from what Delta is saying, there are all kinds of ways of figuring out that we were socializing with a zero. And better, better to minimize those ways. The fewer people who know, the better. Um, but yeah, for for Delta, this is a uh, uh, for for them. They are a little bit concerned about it. Anyway, Isaac wanted to talk to me about something today, since it's our last free day before we get too drunk to function. Engaging side content! There it is, the engaging side content. Boring. Um, ooh. Wow, a lot to unpack here. So first of all, this illuminates something that I was not aware of earlier. I thought our heart to heart with Isaac took place shortly after um, our first meeting with Isaac and Dante, because Isaac says, oh, I'm sorry that you had to see this kind of argument. You know, the first time you walked in here. I would hate for that to be your first impression of me. Um, so I thought the heart to heart with Isaac took place shortly after that, Monday or Tuesday of that week. Um, but here we're learning that it took place on Thursday. <laughs> it's our last free day before we get too drunk to function. Um, And that previous journal entry told us Wednesday or Tuesday was when we bonded with Dante. Um, okay, so we're, we're, we're putting things in place in the timeline, the way they go, in order. Um, and... And I get the feeling that Delta writes in their journal at the end of the day, because they talk about the things that have occurred on the current day of the journal entry, and they have a lot of thoughts. So, um, so it's like it's like they're processing all of the events of the of the current day. So here, what they're saying at the very end, Isaac wanted to talk to me about something today. Um, which means, if if my hypothesis that Delta writes at the end of the day is true, so we've already had our conversation, and. Delta doesn't have anything to say about that, whether whether I said yes or no to, to Isaac's um, inquiry about whether I'm interested in him romantically. This could be Clay's just trying to leave it open so that the same journal entry can be used regardless of what choice I choose to say to Isaac. Uh, <clears throat> but if I choose I'm going to choose to read into it a little more and not to, not to suspend, not to break my suspension of disbelief. I'm going to choose not to break my, uh, my immersion in the game. Delta is being silent about this conversation, either because they still have to collect their thoughts about it, or... Um, I also think it's really fat. It's it's it casts a new light on the situation that um, that that conversation with Isaac took place just the day before our big party. So it's fresh in our minds when we are partying. I think what we've learned is that our our combative options are just uh, Delta expressing some stress, some tension. Um, and um, and that's okay, because the rest of our interactions with the crew are definitely positive interactions, and they're smoothing that over. Um, we're turning this into more playful jabs and not actual, I don't like you, we're gonna fight. <laughs> not, not, not actually that. But yeah, so... That's where we are right now. So thank you for joining me. And 
Um, whenever part two of the demo comes out, that's when I will return with more uploads. Um, hopefully. Hopefully, that is my plan. So, uh, until next time, you all take care. You all take care. Love you guys, and goodbye for now.